Please cooperate with the officers or someone's liable to get hurt. Keep those lights on her and don't let her get out of it. not to get out of bed till Saturday. It's only a cold. I'd feel fine if it wasn't for that Lulu up there. My precinct had to get stuck with the dame who thinks she's the B-19. Out of this world! Oh, there she goes again. That's where I'm going. That's where you all ought to go. Out of this world! Out of my mind. That's where I'm going. Nice view, huh? Sorry, Pat. I've been looking for you, Doc. You know, I don't think that girl means to jump. Why, no parachute? Who's going to get a rap for this anyhow? Pat, you know why you're still a detective sergeant, not a captain? All right, I'll fight. Why? Because it never occurs to you to use a little elementary psychology. I don't think the boys in the street cleaning department understand them $5 words either. To them, it'd be just plain splash. That could be a form of frustrated exhibitionism. Some sort of schizophrenia, as it's called. That means she's a nut Sunday. Oh. Doc, I'll bet you 10 bucks you can't do anything with her either. Yeah. Maybe you'd like to try a little of that bell something sneezy on her. No, I don't know, Captain. But we're not getting anywhere this way. Maybe it's the only way I can keep you from getting pneumonia. Yeah. Sure, I'll try it if you'd like me to. Thanks, Doc. We might start by taking that net away. Oh, oh now, wait a minute. Let's put you out of that room. Fill the street completely. Take our audience away, and then let's see what happens. Good luck, Doc. Oh, I'll take that tent. Doc! Play on the streets! Everybody! Right around the corner! Everybody! Up the rooftop! Okay, take the nut away. Hello. Don't you try to grab me now. I won't. Out of this world. That's where I'm going. Maybe you're right. It's not much of a world these days. Can't you hear those trumpets? You don't mind if I join you? You see, I'm a pitch. Don't come near me. This isn't your private ledge. I fly around here all the time. Bring the net back again. All right, take it out again. Have you seen my brother around? He's gray with red legs. You couldn't help but notice him. He carries messages for the army, wears a service cap. You know, they've been drafting us pigeons, too. I think I'll have a fly. You want to come? Bring <laughs> back to bed. Careful. This ledge isn't very wide. Hey, wait a minute. You're no dappier than I am. I thought you wanted to jump. Uh, I'm out of this world. Either you're coming inside or you're going to jump or I'm going to push you. and me in perfect focus. So now she ain't gonna die. Ah, you just can't depend on women. What that doc will do for 10 bucks? Don't try to tell me you're not daffier than I am. All right, folks, the show's over. Break it up, boys, and get things moving before the little flower arrives.
wait a minute. Out of this world, yeah, man. That's the music of Hambone Harris and his Harlem hotshots opening tonight. Get inside. That was a crazy stunt. We both might have been killed. Maybe me, but not you. You and your great brother with the red legs. What'd you do it for? Twenty bucks, if you must know. A girl got to eat. It's a habit I picked up as a child. Twenty bucks won't begin to pay for your bail. Bail? Yes. You're going out of this world, all right. Six months, anyhow. That's the least you'll get. All I did was get out on a ledge. Have you ever heard of disorderly conduct? Creating a disturbance? Refusing to obey an officer? Inciting to riot? And that's only the beginning. The judge will throw the whole law library at you. Sure, and you'll help him. I guess you've never been hungry. I bet you've never known what it means to owe two weeks' rent. Come on, back. Open up. I'm sorry. I've got to let the boys in now. A lot of good it does to try to stay on the level in this town. I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. Please don't let them arrest me. I didn't mean any harm. I've been out of a job for weeks. What would you do if you didn't have a dime? I guess you must have been pretty desperate. Come on, back. Open up. Come on, open up. Well, okay. All right. The worst case of starvation I've ever seen. Shock, too. Get some water. Get some brandy. Give her air. Sergeant, you're just in time. Call the hospital and tell them to shoot an ambulance over here fast. Maybe we can save her. I doubt it. Oh, I'll take that ten bucks. Oh, the poor kid. Where's the phone? Thanks, Doc. Do you think she'll live? We might pull her through, but it'll be nip and tuck. Outside! Outside! She'll still have to face charges, you know. Come on, outside, all of you. Newspaper photographers, reporters, and everybody. Come on! Hello, Detective Sergeant Doyle speaking. I want an ambulance. Hey, Doc. Got some unpleasant news for you. You haven't got the tent? No, they sprung Vic Kelly today. I thought he still had two years to go. Good behavior. Vic Kelly, good behavior. Headquarters passed the word to find out if you'd like a couple of the boys to keep an eye on him. What for? Hello. Come on. Well, considering he always was a cutie pie with a pistol and that it was your testimony that finally sent him up, Everybody figures that the first time you two meet head on that... Hello! Hello! Shh. Telly knows I only did what I had to as a doctor. I warned him of that the night they carried him in. Hello! Well, maybe so, but the tip is out he's looking for you, and I just thought you'd like to know. Uh, no, I don't want a maternity ward. I want the ambulance. The only way to get an ambulance in this town is to get hit by one. Uh, wasn't there an ambulance standing by below? Take a look out. Maybe it's still there. On playing dead, or I'll clip you again. You and how many Marines? Yeah, it's still down there. What's that you just said? Oh, uh, nothing. I was just feeling sorry for her. Out loud. Just another poor little butterfly broken on Broadway's dizzy wheel. Yeah. Well, here's that ten bucks, Doc. I know what you're going to do with it. But here, here's an extra five for me. A publicity stunt. Why the double cross? Oh, the girl's Here's a break, Doctor. Is she crazy? How oh, did you keep her from jumping? The girl has need for a week. Give her a break. Well, give her a shot. Gently, easily there, easily. Take it easy. All right, make way there, boys. Bring her up here. All right, come on, let's go. Bring it up here. Hey! 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 Just a minute. Haven't I seen you around Doc Broadway's offices? Sure. He's treating me for sinus on the cuff. That's what I thought.
Another grain. I'll stick. 20,000, gentlemen. Three dictators. Where am I? She don't know where she is. Where are my clothes? It's the Dane. Can't you ever be honest, Professor, even with matches? Practice, gentlemen, merely practice. I said, where are my clothes? This time, make it high, low. I don't like them Chinese games. If somebody doesn't hand over my clothes in one minute flat, I'm going to throw a chair through that window. I wouldn't do that. This, my dear lady, is a gentleman's game, and we're all gentlemen. But comes chair heaving, baby, and you're allowed to have one heaved at your chin. You can't keep me here. The door's open, lady. You know I can't go without my clothes. What are you holding me here for? My dear lady, we came up here for a sociable game of cards and discovered you asleep. We didn't bother you, so don't disturb us. And if you'll pardon my vulgarity, beat it! I can't leave dressed like this and you know it! Benny, do something about Dorothy Lamore here. She's taking her mind off the game. Back in there. What might you gentlemen be doing here at this hour? We kind of heard there was an old boyfriend of yours about town. Dick Telly? Oh, forget it. I don't want you hanging around here with any hardware. Do you hear? Well, on your feet again, I see. How do you feel? You should know. I'm sorry. I had to give you a little something to make you sleep. I can still feel it. No, I was talking about a hypoderm. A what? Well, it's all right. I'm a doctor. Lady. You're talking to Dr. Broadway. And that's just a little whimsy some columnist dreamed up. The name is Kane. I suppose you're going to ask me to believe that this is your office. No, that's in the building across Times Square. Strictly orthodox, everything. Old magazines, old furniture, old bills. This is where I live. Where's my dress? You'll find your dress in the bedroom closet. Unless the boys have hocked it by now. Oh, most unwarranted innuendo. This is the professor. I use him every now and then to play cards with nervous, expectant fathers. Helps calm them down. Say, Doc, why don't you spend the night at the barracks? I'll rub you down myself. This is Benjamin Stravopoulos. Proprietor International Steam Baths, 525 West 43rd Street. We never close. Friday night, ladies' night. How are you there? I suppose he's quite a character, too. You said it, baby. Leave him get you on that table sometime. They're not as hard-boiled as they seem. Matter of fact, they help pay for my medical education. Dad used to cover Broadway for the old morning telegraph. Newspaper man. Died when I was a kid. I didn't find out till years later that the money from his estate was a few of the boys here chipping in. Should have known his pops. Tops. From Pittsburgh. Plattsburgh. Pitts. Platts. It's got a bird in it, ain't it? Hello. Yes? This is my caddy. I've got to talk fast because I had to leave Miss Tan with nobody there. Don't you come by Leah's tonight. I just saw Vic Telly going in and... I know, Mon. Thanks just the same, but... Now, Ma, don't argue with me, or I won't let you pay me off your arthritis in morning papers. I'll have a steak sent up for you after you're dressed. You're still in the jam, you know, and it's going to take some squaring. I think you better stay put for a while. I'd rather take my chances out in the open, where the running is better. You're going to stay put until I can round up Sergeant Doyle and laugh him out of this, or else you can take your six months and save me a lot of trouble. W will you make that steak with onions? That's better, huh? Benny, Louie, come in here quick. How did that get there? We'll take care of him, Doc. No, you won't. I'm going to meet Telly right now, and I don't want any of you tagging me. Okay, Doc, you know best. Practically accomplished. I've got to pay a little call, but I'm sure you'll be all right here. I haven't used this for years. After I leave, I think you'd better lock that door. Just say, Big Telly call. Glad to see you out, boy. Oh, you look great. Got a cigar for me, kid? Well, in the old days, a fella could always tell he was a friend of yours if you handed him a cigar. All right, so you don't want to waste a cigar. That still don't mean I won't give you the best buy in New Falls Soonies you can find on Broadway. Places bigger, better than ever. Drop over, Vic. I want to talk to you anyhow. Oh. Why? Maybe the last chance you can get a bargain at those prices. Take care of yourself, sweetheart.
Ah. Hello, Pig. Big Telly's inside. I seen him. Thanks. guys would have thought I was reaching for a rod. A lot of guys did. If I was to knock you off right where you're sitting, what do you think will happen to me? Well, apart from a couple of other things, I think you'd die of excitement and shock if you really want to know. Don't forget I dug that bullet out. Yeah. Doc up at Sing Sing said you did a wonderful job. I must have told you something else very recently. You're a very sick man, Vic. There's no blood in your hands. Your fingernails are blue. So are your lips. How long to give you? One month, maybe two. But I've got some unfinished business before I kick off. You've got to help me, Doc. Everybody I kill is purely accidental. Nothing like that. Your office still at the same place. I'll be waiting for you. Everything under control? Oh, yes, I had that steak. Now I'm reading some of your medical books. And if that's what goes on inside my stomach, I'm sorry I had it. I just wanted to tell you I'll be a little later than I expected, but stick around. Oh, I couldn't think of leaving until I finished this chapter on the care and treatment of fractured jaws. Thanks for the steak, Doctor. I was just going. Goodbye. Hello? Hello? And it took plenty of mugsy to come to stand and blast my alibi like you did. Doctor's got to report gunshot wounds. Some don't. You're an honest guy, Kane. In my racket, that's a knock. Not to me. Kane, you're the only man on earth I trust with $100,000. Uh-uh. I know. This isn't hot money. Never mind how I got it. The police have no claims against it. Some other guys think they have, but not the cops. Though I put away a long time ago for a dame. No, Vic, I'm sorry. The dame is my daughter. I want you to see that he gets to her. Why don't you give it to her yourself? If it was that easy, would I be standing here spilling my insides out to you? I haven't seen her since 1925, when my wife and I busted up. She was six years old then. She didn't know I was in the racket. I guess she still don't. And that's the way I want it. She must have read about Vic Tully. Sure. But with the way her mother raised her, I don't think she knows Vic Tully's her old man. What about her mother? Dead. The only thing I know about the kid is that she calls herself Margie Dove. She's been in the business for a couple of years. You're practically in the show business now. You know everybody. You can ask around. That's expecting a lot, Tully. Two things kept me alive that night five years ago. One was you. The other was this. You've got to help me. I've got the money in a safe deposit box at the Merchants and Farmers Bank out in Jersey. Here's a letter of authorization and a key. That's all you need. Come on, Vic. I've got to keep you looking good. Take off your coat. You've got to get rid of that prison pallet. You're one of my prize exhibits. 
You know, that operation I performed on you got me a page in the medical journal. They gave it four stars. And what do you say, Doc? You can only take a few minutes of this at first. It's pretty powerful. He'd be small like a mother. And dark curly hair. And pretty. Any strawberry marks on her left arm? Operation scars? She might even be one of my patients, you know. The only time she went under the knife is when she had her tonsils out. I... I held her hand. She said she wouldn't be afraid if she held my hand. What do you do it, Doc? I don't know. Hello? Hello, Doc. Busy? I've got a patient, if that's what you mean. Well, when you get through, drop over to night court and watch your girlfriend take a flying leap into a stretch on the island. What are you talking about? What do you think? On account of where such old friends, I'll have a rush through fast. Hello. Dame, I've got to rush over to the night court. Will you excuse me, Vic? You haven't answered me yet, Doc. I've got so many things to do. You've got to help me. You could do this like I want it done if anybody could. I'm up to my neck in my own grave. There ain't many people who get asked to do a favor by a dead man, you know it. See, the nails are blue. There is no blood in it. There's blood on it. Not on this. Help me to do one square thing. I don't know how to pray. I'm afraid of what's out there. My wife killed herself. Jaime Peters, Dutch Anderson, Maxie Sherman. You don't forget the people you've killed. They stay with you, they don't go away, they wait for you. Help me. I've got to do one square thing. Okay. Thanks. Relax now. You've got to take it easy, you know. Open your shirt. You better only take about five minutes of this. You can get a bad burn. Anything else you'd like to tell me? That's all. You better go ahead. I don't think we ought to leave here together anyhow. Okay, then. Fifty days. Just a moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, I've come to plead leniency for this young woman. I'm sorry, Dr. Kane, that sentence has just been passed. Either two hundred and fifty dollars fine I'll or... Pay. It isn't the money that matters, although I'm not a rich man. I'm here to protest against the vicious system that makes this sort of thing possible. Uh-oh, he's off again. Ducks and high over another of life's unhappy victims. Here is a poor creature who's been pounding the pavements of our city for months, seeking honest employment. A friendless little waif, alone. Every door closed against her. Tonight on the verge of starvation. With your permission, Your Honor. As a physician, I can assure you it's one of the most pitiful cases of malnutrition I've ever come across. And why, Your Honor? Why is she on the verge of starvation? Because she happens to be that rare creature, an honest, decent girl. She's never been in jail before. Have you? A girl's first offense, Your Honor. Strictly from hunger. And what a price she's being made to pay. I thought you said you were going to pay it. Your Honor, uh, allow me to paint a picture for you. Go ahead and paint, Doctor. You fascinate me. This girl, Your Honor, She's really little more than a child, has done something foolish, but has committed no crime. The one who should be standing before this bar of justice is the scoundrel who, for a few paltry dollars, persuaded her to risk her neck on the ninth floor of the Surrey Arms Hotel. Send him to the island, Your Honor. Send a thousand like him, and make it possible for a pure, decent American girl to survive without jeopardizing her life. Well, if the young lady would give us his name, there's nothing to stop you from preferring charges, I guess. Who is he? Yes, uh, where, where can we lay our hands on this wolf? Oh, please don't ask me, Doctor. He paid me. I don't want to get him in any trouble. Oh. There you are, Your Honor. A gallant young woman. Wild horses couldn't drag his name from her lips. 
Uh, gentlemen, it's the kind of girl you'd be proud to introduce to your mothers. That's all, Your Honor. It's a great privilege for me to be able to pay $250 to purchase this girl's freedom. Of course, the uh, stigma of her arrest still remains, alas. An ugly blot that someday may rise like a shadow between her and the happiness that she's surely destined to enjoy someday with some fortunate man. Will she confess to it? I think she will. Will it make a difference to his love? Let us hope not. Dr. Kane, I'm touched. If this young lady had some sort of a job to turn to, I might consider suspending our sentence. I'll guarantee her a job as my reception. Very well. Sentence suspended. Good night and good luck, young lady. Thank you, Judge. Good night, Doctor. Hold it, Miss Monaghan, will you please? Thank you. Thank you. I said good night. What are your plans now? Good night and God bless you, Your Honor. Give us the statement, Miss Madigan. You know darn well that if you really stuck me for that 250 bucks, you'd have found it on the bill for your Aunt Lottie's appendix. Lunch tomorrow? Same time, same place? 1.30. Come on, Pat, don't be sorry. Hey, you really saved me from a stretch, didn't you? He sure hey. did, sister. Hey, Doc, I think you're swell. You're a nice kid, too. Words are cheap, baby. I think he rates a kiss for that. Forget it. No, I think he's right. Oh, boy, hold it. Get for me. Doctor, if you and your little playmates don't get out of here, I may slap you all in the cooler. I beg your honor's pardon. Report for work tomorrow, 9 a.m. sharp. Hey, let's get out of here, Pat. Come on over to my place and have a snort. Huh? I can stand this snort, but it'll be with someone worth snorting with. I'll snort by myself and I'll be in good company. Doc, will you please tell me why you hang around Times Square, getting mixed up with these broken-down Cinderella's, Broadway screwballs, stale actors? I'm always afraid they're going to jam you up. With what you've got on the ball, you ought to be over on Park Avenue. Getting that heavy sugar. You got me there, Pat. Maybe it's because they need me more. Like that girl tonight. I don't know. What's that light over in your office? What? It's funny. It looks like my ultraviolet ray lamp. There's something queer. What is it? used to be Vic Telling. Yeah. Doc thinks it's homicide. Yeah. Could have been a heart attack. But he appears to have been struck on the jaw, I think, by a gun butt. Yeah, Doc. The DA will want to ask you a few questions. I know you've got nothing to do with it, but you know the way they always like to gab. You don't mean to say they'll think this is my mess. Excuse me, Hello. Yes, this is Dr. King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hotel Lawson, room 441. All right, I'll be over. Patient? Yeah. Back in a minute. It's an emergency. Sorry, Doc, I can't let you go like this. What do you mean? Why not? Now, look, Doc, everyone in town knows Vic Telly was gunning for you. And they take those things seriously down the DAs. You come with me first. Tell them you never even saw the lot. But I did. I left him here under the sun lamp. You're kidding. No, he came up to ask me to. Well, he just came up. You don't think I did this, do you, Pat? Of course not. Be back in 15 minutes. Word of honor. OK, Doc, but I'm sticking my neck out, letting you walk out of here, even across the street. Good evening, I'm Dr. Kane. Did you just call my office? Oh, yes, Doctor. Will you come in, please? Hotel Lawson, 
Room 441, please. Yes? Is Dr. Kane there? Kane, K-A-N-E. Didn't you phone for a doctor? Sorry, never heard of him. Must be a mistake. Here you are, Grandma. What's this? I was promised a saw pack. This is only a fin. Go on, beat it. I've known the doc a long time, and he's always been all right. So I waited an hour. And when I checked on his call, I found it was a phony. You dumb lunk. Oh, now, Joe, wait a minute. He gave me his word of honor. I'd like to wring his neck. Just checked on the garage, Inspector. Kane got his car and pulled away a half an hour ago. All right, Doyle. This is in your lap. Now get Kane and get him quick. There you are, Dr. Kane. And here are your credentials. We'll keep the letter reports. Thank you very much, Mr. Titus. So you're the famous Dr. Broadway. Say, doctor, not that I want any free advice, but you know that every morning after breakfast, I get the most severe pains right here. My wife says it's buckwheat cakes, but I think it's her homemade bread. Well, uh, let me see your tongue. Well, if I were you, Mr. Titus, I'd consult my regular physician without delay. But he doesn't seem to know a thing. That's of why course, I... I couldn't be sure, but it looks to me like, like an advanced case of trollopass. Uh, trollopass? Is that bad? Well, unless it's promptly cured. I'd cut out buckwheat cakes, homemade bread, coffee, sugar, bacon, eggs, whatever. But, doctor, breakfast is my big meal of the day. Hello. Huh? You wouldn't want your ears blown back, would you? Hand over that folder. Pretty, you're glad to see me. Now just walk along, nice life. What is this, a stick-up? And just a doctor. So am I, the name's Kane. Show's over, you're on your way to New York to have tea with the district attorney. You got me wrong, bud, I... I never saw you around Broadway. Who imported you rats for this? Well, now listen. <laughs> Connie, this is Dr. Kane. Say, where are you anyway? There have been lots of people looking for you. People in nice blue uniforms. What? Sure, I know where the files are. I've been on the job since nine. Well, right on top you'll find a card index with the names of all my patients. I want you to call them one by one and ask them if they've ever seen or heard a girl named Margie Dove. Margie Dove? That's right, Margie Dove. Is she pretty? Never mind if she's pretty. Just do what you're asked. Straight? Mm-hmm. And listen, be sure to say you're not calling about the bills. Goodbye. Lieutenant, 
He hasn't shown up yet, but I got a tip. He phoned that girl ten minutes ago. Thanks. Well, you rat, where have you been? I had to go. Come on. Oh, come on now, Doctor, please. Everybody knows that Kelly was gunning for you. She was found in your office, murdered under circumstances which you either refuse to explain or you can't. Yes? You gave Doyle your word of honor he'd be back in 15 minutes and then took a powder on him. An hours later, you show up here and refuse us any explanation as to your actions or your whereabouts. I know, If we draw the worst possible conclusions, Doctor Kane, you can hardly blame us. Conclusions aren't evidence. Why should I want to kill Big Telly? Possibly you were trying to beat him to the punch. I've told you that he came up to ask me a favor which I'm not free to reveal. Look, Doc, did you just admit that you made a mistake? You got scared, beat it, then thought it over and came back. Look, get this straight. I did not kill Vic Telly. I don't know who did. I made him a promise before he died that I'm gonna keep it, so help me. And while I'm about it, I might even find out who the murderer is. In that case, you'll be the first to know. Okay, Doc, we could hold you as a material witness if we wanted to, but you're free to go. Thanks. But you better be available more readily in case we want to talk to you again. That's a promise. Thank you, gentlemen. You know, I find it hard to think of Kane as a suspect. He's like such a nice guy. Yeah, everybody thought the Bluebeard was a small guy, too. Until they started digging in a cellar. You're lead slapping. Well, your windows were grimy. Now, I... just leave those things for the janitor, huh? Oh, oh, flowers. Well, I can see where my office is going to break into a rash of little feminine touches. Don't you like little feminine touches? Miss Maddox. The feminine touch is a beautiful thing. On a beach at Waikiki, a bench in Central Park, underneath the tropic moon, there's nothing like the good old feminine touch. Why, Doctor? Always in the living room, a hot dinner on the table, fingers running through your hair at the end of a very long and tiring day. You mean you like that? Yes. Yeah. But not in this office. Uh-oh. You sound like a woman hater. Uh-oh. -uh. Well, uh, what kind of girls do you like? Would you really like to know? Mm-hmm. You'll tell anyone. Mm -hmm. There's a patient. What were you about to say, Doctor? Never mind what I was about to say. See who it is. Oh, say, I forgot to tell you. That might be Margie Dove. Good. Who found her? I don't know. She phoned in about 20 minutes ago and said she was on her way up. Well, if that's Margie, send her right in. And Connie, thanks for the flowers. It's Margie Dove, all right. She looks like... Never mind that. Send her in. Ms. Dove, you can call it a day now and change your clothes, but check with me before you leave. Very good, Doctor. Say, so what are you paging me all over town for? Well, Miss Dove, this is one visit to the doctors I don't think you'll regret. You see, oh, for the last ten years or so, your father's been in the oil business. What do you think you're kidding? I haven't been papers are full of it. I know you murdered my father. Why? Well, don't apologize to me. I'd like to give you a silver loving cup for doing it. You must be mistaken. I know who my father was, and I'm sick of lying about it. They always find out. Get a good job somewhere, and they find out, and they can me. I'm going to get married. And the guy's family finds out. He ruined my life and he killed my mother and I hope he burns for it. Dirty murdering death. He left you quite a piece of change. Money. A lot of it. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean a thing to me. I'm no hypocrite, mister. I hated my father all my life just because he's dead and he left me some money. I still hate him. I don't want any part of it. He left you a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand. Maybe you ought to look at this a little differently. Your father wanted you to have this money very much. Maybe to make up for, well, a lot of things. He asked me to find you and I've kept my word. The money belongs to you, I can't keep it. Well, I guess if I sat down and talked to myself, told myself not to be a dope. hundred thousand dollars. You got it here? No, not exactly. But I have the key to where it's kept. Mr. Dove, have you always been a chain smoker? I suppose so. Throat raw in the morning, a lot of coughing? 
Now and then, why? That's what I thought. You'd better let me have a look at that throat. Hey, now, wait a minute. I don't like doctors. There's nothing wrong with my throat. The oral pharynx seldom warns you. It'll only take a second. Ah. Think of Charles Boyer and say, ah. Ah. There, you see, it didn't hurt a bit. The throat's fine. My, uh... Still have your tonsils, hmm? Yes. Well, Miss Dove, I'm sorry you feel the way you do about your father, but I, I can... guess if you want me to have the money, I'll take it. I'm sure you won't regret your decision. Maybe I won't if it's in cash. Where is it? In a locker at the Grand Central Station. The number corresponds to the one on the key. Okay, thanks. I guess I've been pretty nasty, but uh, you know how it is. I know how it is. Well, thanks for everything, Doc. Goodbye. Goodbye. Something. Have all the luck. That girl's no more Margie Dove than I am. She's a phony. Hmm? How do you know? Who is she? That's what I want to find out, and you're going to help me. How? Follow her. Now, don't let her out of your sight, and phone me the moment she lights. And remember, don't take any chances. Okay? Sold. Hello, Mary. Nice goods, huh? Yeah, but I got some nicer goods for you in your favorite color, green back green. Try to have you followed, huh? Yeah, but I watched like you said. Who was the dame? Oh, I don't know. She's a nurse. Works for me or something. Pretty? Yes. This is your cut. All of it? Yeah, sure. You're a good kid. Gee, thanks. Blotter! Sure, that blotter's if he had you followed. What'd you expect, you silly? I told you the doc was sharp. You must have handed it up good. Don't call me a ham. That was pot roast. You're leaving for Havana anyhow. Oh, no, Jack. On your way. Oh, but I don't want to go to Havana. Hey, use some of these to dry those phony tears. Oh, please, Jack. Get out. Anything wrong, Doctor? Is it too high? No, no, Jim. It's perfectly normal. Oh. Come in. Dr. Kane? That's right. Thank you, sir. Who gave you this? I don't know. It was just sent. Come in again next week, Jim. You're doing fine. Okay, Doc. Thanks. Hello. Who? Oh, I was just...
just going to call you. I kind of thought you would. Why don't you run up, Doc? We just got a new four line and beautiful stuff. Some tweed that'll knock your eye out and a couple of other little items that ought to have the same effect. Why don't you drop down here? I'm waiting for someone. Well, that girl of yours won't be coming back, Doc, until after you and I have had a little chat. Run up anyway. You could probably use a new suit, and I think that's your fit. I might even say you're measured. I'll be right over. Oh, pardon me. Are you all right? Sure. We never turn out a classier suit, kid, so help me. Look at those pants. Fit you like a glove. Yeah, but that ain't where I wear my gloves. What's gonna happen? I bend over. <laughs> bend over, let's see. Oh, the kid's right. What's the matter with you, Morris? A little more slack in the back. It's all right, kid. We'll fix it right up. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Doc. How are you? <laughs> mm, not bad, not bad. But we can fix you up better than that. I always know how to fix up a friend. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I tried to get Vic over here the night that he, uh... Well, I mean the night that you... Yeah, I was beginning to gather that. I sort of thought you might. Step in, sir. Have a drink? No. Oh. Well, over the river. Or up the river, if you like it that way. Smooth stuff. With friends, I never cut liquor. Just the throat. <laughs> That's business. You know, Doc, a fellow with your complexion should never wear that shade of brown. Why don't you let me get your measurements on file, huh? Then you won't have to come in every time you need a new suit. I'll take them myself. Okay, go ahead. You know, for you, uh, I'd suggest a nice, smart blue worsted suit and a three-button single-breasted model. Bring out the, uh... The oomph? That's right. Knock those dames for a row. Especially nurses. Like the one in your office? You mean the one that used to be in my office? Not too much padding in the shoulders. Fine, no padding. No, Doc, you're a smart guy. Well, I'm a little smart, too. Well, let's say we both know the right time. <laughs> I don't underrate you, Doc. I knew you'd be showing up around here sooner or later. Chest 40. So you see, it saves you time and me trouble. Okay, Jack, what plays? Who are you fronting for? Oh, I front for nobody, sweetheart. I'm a businessman. Some of it's in the open, some of it isn't. I think you know that. But frankly, I like a buck. Doc, you've got 100,000 of them that belong to me. Funny, I don't remember seeing your name on any of them. I can practically give you the serial numbers. You know, I uh, backed Vic Telly for years. Then maybe you've got a notion or two about who killed him. I killed him. Waste 34. But then I'm a careful fellow, Doc. That's why you're in a spot, not me. Telling you that won't do you any good either. Not the way you're situated. You mean I'm situated halfway between the hot foot and the hot seat? That's right. You're facing the chair. A long rap, anyhow. And I can get you out of it without hurting me either. So why don't we quit throwing punches and make a deal, huh? All I want's the dough. Suppose I say no dice. Oh, I'm not gonna threaten you. I don't have to. The state will knock you off for me. That's a good line. No, I mean the material. Best you can buy. You don't think the uh, case is strong enough against you, do you? Funny, I didn't think so either. You got a cigarette, Doc? Your wallet's missing, too. We'll have to buy that fellow who bumps you on the way up. Neat, huh? Came. Unless you do like I say, that dame of yours is going to do a swan dive. Practically into Times Square, out the window of a room where the cops will find your cigarette case, your wallet, and a lot of other little things tying you and the dame up with Vic Telly. By the time the district attorney and the newspapers get through with that, you just know you'll fry. And even if you cook up an alibi for yourself, they'll still have to pick the girl up with a whisk broom. You're good with the words and music. I know the score. I want money here by 12 o'clock sharp, not blotters. A minute later, there's a dead dame and you're a dead duck. Okay, you win. <laughs> Not that fast, no. A guy like you doesn't agree that quick unless he's warming up a fast one. All right, tell you what you do. You go ahead and pull anything you like. Only be here by 12 o'clock sharp. But what kind of talk's that between gentlemen? Look, let me show you a piece of goods I got here with a pinstripe. British import, you'll love it. Isn't that nice, huh? Make it up for you in three days, and when you see it, you won't thank me, sweetheart. You'll kiss me. I'll skip the romance. Doc Kane wants to see you over at Bunny's place. The doc? Yeah, and bring the hardware. Hello, 
carry, fairest flower of yon rising moon. What is it, you old son? Dr. Kane would speak thee at Benny's, for yon tower strikes the half of the hour. Me? <laughs> extra, extra, get your papers. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please. Sure. Dr. Kane wants to see you over at Benny's. Benny to Masua? Come on, wait. Hi. This is Dynamo. Hi, Mo. The doc wants to see you over at Benny's place. Yeah, and bring a friend or two. Sure, I'll get Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Never mind him. Now look, boys. I got a hunch they're holding the girl somewhere in the Times Square district. You know that district better than anyone. That's why you're here. Don't worry, Doc. We tip the boys off. You've always trusted me. This time I need you. It's a shot in the dark and I haven't much time, but each of you can help if you do as I tell you. Anything for you, Doc. You betcha, Doc. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's right. gonna trouble you, Doc. I'll be right here, at least until 11.30. Okay, sir. Did you fix it with the people who handled that electric news sign, the one that goes round and round the Times building? Sure did, Doc. Do you think they'll play ball? I gave them the lowdown and they said okay. Good. Now, here's the bulletin. Get it started along about the time that you fellas take over. Okay, Doc, it's in the bag. Well, the whole of Broadway covers. Now, wait a minute. I don't want you running any special risks or doing anything to... Mm, what a collection. Uh -oh. Hello, Pat. What's going on, Doc? Pat, I wish I could tell you, because you guys could probably handle this about four times better than I can. But if I do, I gamble with somebody else's life. I'm gambling enough as it is, but I may need you later. Sorry, Doc, I need you now. Huh? What? Some Jersey bank guy told the DA you got a hundred G's of Vic Telly's money. The order's out to pick you up on site. Now, you'll be out in the morning. I know it doesn't mean anything. Look, Pat, let me see the DA in the morning, right oh, now. Wait a minute. Nobody's going to hang anything on you that I know about. That's the trouble, what you don't know about and what I can't tell you. But Sorry, no. I can't help it, Doc. But Pat, I got to be free. This listen, is a Doc, listen, the last time I let you go, I almost lost my job. I'm a friend of yours, yes. But I'm a cop, too. Listen, kid, I can't afford... I hate to do this, Doc. Take off them braces. Here, yeah, take them off. Now, wait a minute. I'm only doing what I got to do. You go ahead. As I told you, I'll be back. Not tonight. Relax. Nobody gets on this floor unless they're okay. Open it. glass with Kane's fingerprints on it and his credentials. I gotta leave him around here someplace. Don't touch him, they... Hey! That's the idea. <laughs> Just what did you do with that money, Dr. Kane? I don't know anything about the money. For the hundredth time, why don't you call the manager or the cashier of that bank? They'll tell you I'm not the Dr. Kane that claimed that money. I've gotta get out of here. Bring him in. Come in, Mr. Titus. The manager of the bank is here now. Good. Mr. Titus, is that the man you gave the money to? No, he's not the one. What did I tell you? Now will you let me out of this flea circus? No, he isn't the man I gave the money to. But he joined him a second or two later out the sidewalk. Yep, that's him. I saw him. Wait a minute. Nice going, Kane. You almost got away with it. Book him. Young man, if you're as bad a doctor as your friend, I hope you get life. Trollifaz. No buckwheat cakes. <laughs> Come along. Well, in one minute, everybody goes into action. I don't get it. What's a doc shooting for? Make one rat think another rat squeal. Maybe they'll all squeal loud enough for you to hear them. Right, it's been around the cops as long as you have. Should ought to known that. It's a long shot, boys, but for the doc's sake, I hope it works. Yeah, and for the girls. Yeah. All right, boys. There she goes. I get it. Send up enough smoke, and them rats holding the girl will think Venice pants are on fire. Correct. Uh, come on, here we go. Where's Maxie? Oh, he'll be along. What are you fellas trying to pull, anyway? Nothing. We'll just take it over to the establishment for a little while. 
We even got you some new salesmen, too. Oh, yeah. I suppose the doc's behind this, huh? Well, I'm afraid it's too bad. It won't help him. Huh. You ain't answering no phones. And you ain't leaving that chair, either. What? Reminds me up, boys. I'll see you later. I think I'll run down to Leo's for a cup of coffee. So you're going to Leo's for a cup of coffee, eh? Ain't that nice. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing at all. Coffee's good for you. Especially a cup of coffee at Leo's at 12 o'clock. Well, you got me wrong, right? Yeah, I got you wrong. Well, Jerry and I are tossing a dame out of a window at 12 o'clock. You'll be at Leo's having a cup of coffee. And should anything go wrong, you'll be in the clip. And why? Because you'll be at Leo's drinking a cup of coffee. He'll have 20 fat witnesses to testify you were there. Is that right, Al? You know I don't go for that kind of stuff, Red. I wasn't hired for that. Beginning tonight, my boy, you're starting a new career. Sit down. Relax, sister. taking over. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Lie down and do as I said. <laughs> okay, Jim. I think you'll live. Oh, hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Tommy. What are you doing here? I, uh, I think you'll be all right. Just see that he gets a glass of water every hour on the hour. There's uh, nothing much wrong with him, just a little uh, Alvatoris. Alvatoris. <laughs> I've got Alvatoris, Dolores. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You're always popping off. Don't tell me I'm crazy. I've seen it with my own eyes. Ah, you're full of half. I tell you, it's all over Times Square. I saw it on the sign. What sign? Why don't you look? You can see it right from here, out the window. He'll come on again in a minute. Uh, he's always seeing things. I don't know. There may be something to it. Yeah, there better be. You'll see. You'll see. Just watch. What are you talking about? He can't even read. What do we do now? Get your stuff together. We're going to get the first plane. Wait a minute. Where's the dame? That door's locked. Open the door. Open the door. Oh, blast. Don't do that. You'll have everybody up here. Come out of there. Haven't you got a key? Oh, I left it in the door. Oh, you chump.
Now look, Connie, come on back in here. Everything's all right now. Uh, I can't. Can't? Well, you got out there, didn't you? Just stay close to the wall. Oh, come on back. You got nothing to be afraid of now. Haven't I? I thought you'd be showing up about this time, Doc. Sure it is, all of it. Count it. Oh, not in front of witnesses. Doc, you know better than that. Get these clunks out of here. Go on, boys. Go on. All the way up. Do as I tell you this time. All the way! Next suits on the house. Uh, hello, give me room 914, please. Yeah. Patrolman Mulvaney speaking. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, Frankie. Bring it right over. Yeah. Got him just in time. Have a drink, Doc? No, thanks. Mind if I have one? better than across me. It's one time you made a mistake, sweetheart. They might lay me out, but there's one thing certain, sweetheart. You won't be there for the wake. Hold it, you're out of it. Just the boys goodbye, Kane. <laughs> Shame to spoil them good coats. She's all yours. This is where I came in. Okay. Hi, Connie. What's the trouble? Uh, I've lost my nerve. Uh-oh, here we go again. Connie, the boys have located Margie Dove up in Buffalo. I'll need you to do an off to Buffalo in the morning with that money, so don't fall now. Didn't you hear me? Yes, but I don't think I'll make it. You know what the trouble with you is? You look down. Look up. All I can see is angels. It's a beautiful night. Think of that beach at Waikiki, a bench in Central Park, and keep looking up. Come on now. Up a little of that feminine touch, huh? All you wanted was a convoy. Uh-uh, keep looking up. He did it again. <laughs> 